Hello beautiful soul, I'm Vicki Howie of ChakraBoosters.com, the creator of Chakra Boosters Healing Tattoos and the author of The Key to the Chakras. And this is the second video in my series where we tap into the power of animals to boost and balance and heal your chakras. Now I know that might sound funny to use animals to heal chakras, but think about it. Primarily, since we're very, very, very young, we love animals. Little kids are absolutely fascinated with animals. And I think this is because we have an entire zoo within us. <laughs> we have the entire range of all animals within us. And different parts of us, uh, like the warrior part in the third chakra might be a more predatory animal, and then the heart might be a more graceful, softer animal, right? But the energies of the animals really enliven our imagination and our energy field. And as you know, the way to shift energy is with intention. The moment that you, in a focused way, put your intention and attention on a chakra, on the energy there, and give it direction, it immediately moves in that direction. So animals will help you do that. And in this video, we're gonna look at the sacral chakra. Now the sacral chakra is your second chakra. The first is your root, which is at the tailbone, and it's red. The second chakra, the sacral, is orange, and it relates to the feminine and to water, whereas the root is masculine and rock earth so you can feel the difference there so now we're in a watery playful it's very very playful it's creative it's emotional it's our childlike chakra and it's also the intimacy chakra where we develop relationships especially with one other the heart is about relationships with many but the second chakra is about two right two people intimacy relationship with one significant other now you might have many one over here and then another friend over here but each one you're joining that person one to one so it's a very interpersonal chakra okay and the animal here that's traditionally related to this chakra honestly doesn't speak to me that much now remember some of this is symbolic but i'm just telling you this because it doesn't speak to me it doesn't feel true for me of this chakra it feels um thought up, masculine, <laughs> but the Hindu religion puts the crocodile here. And the crocodile, for me, I understand it because the crocodile is sort of on land and in water. And also the crocodile carries a lot of the third chakra energy that's coming up after the second. There's a lot of that predatory, ah, I mean, you're not gonna wanna play too much. You're not gonna wanna rustle playfully with a, with a crocodile probably, most of us. <laughs> Other than if we work in some kind of circus type situation, <laughs> I don't think we wanna wrestle a crocodile. So for me, it doesn't really carry because the second chakra is the divine feminine, but I wanted to give you that traditional symbol, the crocodile. For me as a woman, because remember, mostly men, or I should probably say as far as we know, all men develop these symbols and develop the yoga as it exists now. But the divine feminine is water. Uh, the second chakra is all divine feminine, which is playfulness and fertility and creativity. So the animals for me here are the ones that are from water or like to live or play in water and also like to play together. So the quintessential one for me that comes up is an otter. Because I remember seeing pictures of otters and even some video of two otters playing together like in a, in a, a river, right? And they're playing and they're wet and they're sleek and they're flexible because the second chakra is all about our mutability and our flexibility and they're just endlessly playful they're goofy uh, so to me otters are the perfect uh, for this chakra the perfect symbol across cultures for some reason the frog is related to fertility well the frog is perfect because first of all the second chakra is very creative and transformational to a certain degree not like the fifth but it is creative and look at how the frog i remember as a kid just watching catching polywogs and then watching the polywogs grow legs and then watching the legs turn into a body and then the whole frog and it was just so fascinating to watch well these frogs they are about fertility, and the second chakra is about feminine fertility, about how we create in our womb, because the pelvic bowl, the ovaries that are related to the sacral chakra, all of this is 
um, about fertility and creating and creation on the most literal level. So I think frogs are excellent here, right? Now frogs don't hang out as much, I don't think in pairs, but frogs a great symbol. Another pair that comes up for me in the water, well of course you could have fish, any type of fish, because they're in the water. Um, and for me, I particularly see the gold and see the koi because they're just so beautiful. I see them um, just swimming, these koi fish. Uh, additionally, dolphins, but I put dolphins more in the sixth chakra. So when I get to that video, watch that video and see. But dolphins do fit here. They're very fitting. So if they show up for you, that's very fitting. But I also just, I pull them into the sixth chakra because they have this higher, wiser, feminine mind and knowing right okay let's see what else um for the oh i know one playfulness for me is represented in monkeys so i always kind of think of myself a little bit like a monkey and i have a lot of second chakra energy that's why sometimes it's hard for me to stay still in these videos because i'm always moving and fluid <laughs> and in yoga i'm very very flexible um but I do think that monkeys are a great second chakra. They have a lot of, it feels like they have different emotions. They're the closest to humans. And that they, uh, I know that we could say apes, anyone in that family, but in particular monkeys are the most playful. I imagine them swinging from trees and, and I imagine them in twos, you know, playing with each other and cleaning each other. And so monkeys are uh, very second chakra, I think that, that works for me. And then finally, when I got into uh, hypnotherapy a lot, I had dreams about water eels. So the snake represents the life energy, the feminine, ultimate flexibility. They can bend absolutely anywhere. But we have sort of a negative connotation. We're kind of fearful of snakes in our culture. But I remember when I was getting my hypnotherapy uh, training, Right before that, I had a dream of a big water eel. It was a gigantic water eel, and she was black and right under the surface of this dark water. So the unconscious is very much related to the sacral chakra because women, we work a lot from that unconscious world rather than from the conscious of the masculine chakras, right? Okay, so I hope this made sense to you and this has helped you. Any other playful or water-oriented or pair to some oriented animals that you can feel into or think of very much can fit in your sacral chakra and your um your home play for this week is to pick one sacral animal that really speaks to you and imagine it in your in your pelvic area imagine that energy in your pelvic area and just look for that animal out in the world maybe cut pictures out if it's an animal you aren't going to see very often um, then cut pictures out put them around uh, the, just the name of that animal seeing it in a journal or on a wall but really involve this animal in your week and whenever you see that animal or see its name I want you to relate it to your second chakra and literally feel the energy of that animal in your divine feminine chakra because this is really right now this is the chakra of this age the divine feminine embodied creative fluid we're very flowing right now because things are changing so fast so this is a very very important chakra um, now more than ever i hope you enjoy playing with it this week see because it's the play chakra and i will see you on the next video much love and many blessings